Welcome to our Smart Hints and Tips webinar. I'm Karen Bonanno and the Founder and Managing Director of EduWebinar and I will be your host and presenter for this broadcast. A little bit on my background, I have been a teacher, a teacher librarian, a head of department, um, acting deputy principal, a regional advisor and education officer. I have over 30 years experience working in the education sector and also with professional associations at the state, national and international level. A lot of our work has been face to face but with the use of technology we're now able to transact a lot of this virtually and this is exactly what we're doing tonight. So in a virtual space we're delivering this professional learning component um, as part of our EduWebinar services. First of all though, please note that the views and opinions that I give to you tonight are my views and there will be references to links and also to some research and resources and it's up to you to take those bits and pieces of information and see how it would apply to you in your environment where you are um, for your school community. The trend that I'm wanting to look at that seems to be popping up on a regular basis is whether changing the design of our classroom space has an impact on student learning. Now if you're not actually in a classroom but you're maybe in a specialised area of the school and you do have students coming through, whether changes in that space um, has an impact on learning. So it could be a school library or it could be um, a science lab or computerised um, area. What it, what are we doing here to actually start to create some changes? Now as I said before, that's the Padlet link and that's where you can uh, post any comments about what you may have done to change your space and how that would impact on the learners. So let's go into this first of all and I want to look at some background research. This infographic comes from a company in the UK who specialise in designing and building spaces not just for schools but for all other organisations. But this information that they have here is from the research that they have done about changes in classrooms and changes in learning spaces within school communities. They indicate that it's a 25% increase by designing a classroom that will help to improve student performance and in this case they identify these five areas where they see students um, engagement, students behaviour, uh, students academic results all start to change because of what's happened in a classroom and you may even identify with that with some of the things that have happened in your space. They also indicate the areas that they would do most of those changes. It can be furniture, it can be the layout of the uh, classroom, it can be just simply adding colour. If you're on a limited budget, it may be just easy enough to paint certain things. Looking at the ambience, the temperature, um, then looking at some things about acoustics, whether the area is too noisy and how you can add things in to dampen down that noise and also then changing some lighting whether it be opening things up so you've got more natural lighting or utilising uh, better artificial lighting. So that's the link to the infographic. This is the particular group who published that and this is their gallery which may give you some ideas of how they've changed or how they've utilised all of these particular environmental factors to change the way the classroom has looked and you may even reflect on that now and say well okay what have I done just recently in regard to the furniture that I have and what and how have I maybe changed that according to the learning tasks that I'm wanting my students to engage in. You don't need to do all these. Um, if you're on a limited budget you may just do one or two so that you can do some subtle changes but you can see the difference uh, that's happening with the students. The other area of work that is worth looking at and this is one that I would encourage you to uh, explore a little bit further. It's about designing spaces for effective learning and in this 
they look at these particular areas that we see down the side. So again, it's looked at the research and it's looked at the uh, significant components that basically if you invest in some of these spaces for the long term, you will see some benefits that result. So in this first one, um, it looks about the space being flexible in that it has to be able to accommodate your current pedagogical practice but also any expansion or future development that you might bring into your classroom environment. Let's say you may just be looking at some group work but then you want to bring in something like the blended learning components. How can you uh, still not have too much change to your space but allow for that flexibility for the pedagogical practices that you would bring in. Then there's the future proofing. So this is dealing with spaces that can be reallocated and, and reconfigured. So you might have say your furniture layout in one way or your desks one way but then because you're changing some of the dynamics of the classroom activities or the students are progressing further into activities where it involves um, group work, how can you change the space and reallocate, reconfigure, but continue that momentum of uh, inspiration for learning that you've, you've developed. Then there's the bold aspect. So this is the future focus for design, the future focus for utilising and accessing the technology as it becomes more available to you. Uh, so you might start off just with something like um, um, a whiteboard in your classroom, but eventually there may be something that's added. It becomes an interactive whiteboard or you start to bring in some display facilities there that can be used within the classroom. So being bold in being able to address some of those changes in, in technology and being able to design the classroom around that space. Then there's the creative element. How can you design things so that you energise and you inspire and you motivate the students? And that could be colour. Uh, quite often that is what I see is that people just add some vibrancy of colour and that actually changes the energy in the room for the students. Then there's the supportive element where you're developing uh, potential for all the learners. So you're making sure that you're trying to establish your space so that you're able to address the learning styles that are evident in, in the students that you have at the time in front of you for that day or for your year that you have with them. And then the last component is the enterprising component where you will be able to look at different um, spaces that can support different purposes and we'll look a little bit at these later with some examples that I've got some galleries of classroom design where you can see how people have got a number of different spaces around the classroom that serve different purposes for the students um, and that particular year level. Then we go into some further research and I think it's important to look at the research because there are some varying views out there. Some research actually says that there's not sufficient evidence at this point or findings at this point to say that there has been changes in um, students learning outcomes as a result of classroom design. Then there's other research that has been experimental and this particular research from Herman Miller is some of that experiment, experimentation and it is saying that there's difference. They have a cohort that they uh, brought through and it was uh, also faculty as well as students and they looked at a number of different things. In particular, they looked at these constructs down the side, but also in the different design elements that might change. So if we look at things like paint, floor, acoustics, lighting, layout, tables, chairs, um, filing storage units, some of the uh, technology that you bring in. And in this case here, they actually brought in some training so that uh, teachers became more comfortable and a little bit courageous within those different learning spaces. So that was a, an element that they brought in there as well. But the main components that they talk about here are first and foremost that the space needs to have this basic human comfort to promote a sense of well-being and to help uh, keep people focused on the tasks and to limit distractions it was imperative that the space needed to be comfortable, that the temperature was um, conducive, it wasn't too cold, wasn't too hot, the lighting uh, was right for what was happening in that, the furniture that they had. So as you see here, these are the markings down this, down this column here that they thought about in regard to the basic human needs. 
And so it became an ability that um, they could change the furniture around and adjust it or they could adjust the seating or they could move the, the whiteboard or, or whatever it was so that there was um, this better support for the learner and in fact in the research that they did with this they, they found that 32% of the students felt that there was a more heightened learning experience because their basic human needs were met in that classroom design. Then we go on to teaching and it, in here we've got uh, looking at the uh, methodologies that you would bring to teaching and how your spaces would be designed to do that. The technology you would use, the tools you would use, also that flexibility. And in this case, they, they, the students said that 43% of those students felt that the layout supported their different learning styles and it increased their interactivity and they could reconfigure the furniture in particular to suit what was happening for their learning styles. And so we see then um, teachers also gaining some benefit from that as well because it means that there's a total change in student behaviour and there's more engagement happening. Then the next uh, area of interest was looking at the learning components and in the research they uh, drew on uh, Dr Mark Prensky's comment saying that students want learning spaces that allow them to get to know each other and to engage in dialogue, uh, to work independently but, but at other times to be able to work in groups on projects. And so what we see happening with the environments here and the learning and the things or the elements that are considered there is that the classroom discussion is more likely to happen when there is that flexibility rather than it being a traditional classroom layout and, a diff and that traditional style of teaching by having some changes. Uh, for example, it could be that there is actually no um, teacher desk, that there is an open plan and uh, there is flexibility and different spaces. The important elements that the students were asking for here was to have communication and also collaboration and they were important for them to develop their skills. Now we have to realise that no size fits all but it's important to have that mobility in the environment to be able to address uh, the learning that needs to take place and the different activities that you would be hosting within your classroom. The last one looks at um, engagement and in this one it's, it's about um, interaction, it's about collaboration, it's about active learning, uh, getting some feedback, having that interactivity, keeping the buzz going, uh, stimulating that learning so that there's more effective and ease of access to the tools and everything that's around. The interesting statistics here that they took from the students, they reported that they were more likely to feel comfortable about asking questions in this type of environment and that they were also more likely to be able to move into group work and also to feel valued in that space. With the teachers, they indicated that they agreed that by changing um, and opening up the, the learning space that there was better collaboration um, with the students and also better collaboration between themselves and the students and as teachers they actually felt a difference as well. They felt more valued by the students because there wasn't this uh, barrier of say a teacher desk to the class or there wasn't some layout of design that was basically creating that essence of um, us and them. So these are all the things and it's interesting to see how they match up with some of the things that we can look at. Now there's ways that um, you can consider how you might want to look at this. So what have you done recently to change your learning space and why have you done that? Now there's two ways you can do this. You can key something into the learning space and we'll have a look at this a little bit later or you can key something into the comments panel or if you have something that you want to share in an audi auditory capacity then I can open up the line and, uh, and, and you can share that. So they're the three ways and you just have to work out which one you're most comfortable uh, in, in doing. If we just go to the Padlet, um, so these are some things here. This is one I put in that basically what you have here is a lot of people are actually using the IKEA store as a place that is quite inexpensive to get access to furniture or different storage or other facilities uh, to be able to bring those into the classroom. And 
So I went online and basically there's all different types of seating that are reasonably priced that could be comfortable for doing various activities within the classroom. That there just doesn't have to be the standard chair as you see there, but other other things. And in this case here, Kelly has put in, in our old building, recovered some chairs, uh, got some funky IKEA fabric and all I needed was a staple gun. You know, really quite simple, but can certainly change the dynamics of, uh, of what you, what's happening. With the Classroom Cribs project, now what this project is, it's only just recently opened and it's designed to encourage people to share what they're doing around the world to, in this case, design brain-friendly learning spaces is, is what they've termed here. Now with this particular Classroom Cribs, there's a competition running between the 14th of August and the 14th of September and what they're wanting people to is to rethink and look at what changes, uh, redesign it, take some pictures and videos, create a crib video or a slideshow and submit that and they say here at this particular site um, there's going to be some, some great prizes. We will look at one of the um, video examples later and you'll see what one classroom teacher has done. For those who, of you who are from the US, uh, you would have started your new school year and so this is kind of tied in with that new school year and giving that a bit of a kick start. So with the video, the example that was submitted, what the teacher has done is a number of things. They don't have a teacher desk, um, so they only have spaces for uh, technology, for student interaction and these desks can be, can be moved around. All the teacher has is a filing cabinet and that's where she puts anything that she needs uh, to, for her classroom planning um, and activities. Then in two spaces within the classroom, up the back and also at the front which you can't see, but they have shelves where they've got books worth reading and they've got a display, an open display area where the books are facing out so the students can see them. And so they look at books worth reading but also books and resources that they would use in their classroom activities. At the front of the classroom there's a magnetic whiteboard and on that there are ongoing daily activities and this means that the students don't have to constantly consult with the teacher, they just look at the board and they see what what is happening for the day and they start working on those particular tasks. As you can see there's different seating, like there's a rocking chair here, uh, we've got the standard school chairs and then there's another kind of uh, chair suitable for sitting in front of a computer. Over at one side here they've got like a little reading area and they've got stools and softer furniture. So there's different seating to suit different environments. With the tables, you can see that some of them are um, painted with that whiteboard paint and some have been left um, as the brown. And that was basically the students indicated that for some of them these were all too bright, the whiteboard ones, and they preferred the brown. But what they've got here is the facility to move these around. They're on casters and they can be moved around uh, to suit the activities that are happening. Also too, when the kids are um, working, you can see there's a soft furniture up the back there, they have, uh, the, the teacher has clipboards so that they don't have to be lugging too much around, they grab a clipboard and their pieces of paper or whatever they're doing and they work on the floor with, with those. Down the side here is the bulletin board and this is blank at the moment and the reason is because it's for the students to decorate during the term and during the year for the things that they want on there. Within the classroom there's also a number of technology spaces, so there's one here and there's another one over this side and one towards the front. So you can see the teacher has got multiple places and spaces uh, in this environment to basically change the design and then look at the dynamics of the classroom. In this next slide it gives you the link to their uh, Twitter hashtag feed and so if you go to this Twitter account uh, with this uh, particular hashtag you'll see some of the pics and videos that have already been shared since this started on the 14th of August and in here you can see the use of colour, uh, different storage, different seating, the reference to the the paint that they've been using to create the whiteboard um, desks. So if you go there at, at, at a later stage you can see the different things and you'll, you'll be able to look at how people are using some of those elements that 
we referred to the start, the, the colour, the furniture, the layout, um, the acoustics, the lighting, all of that. And it's really quite simple to be able to do and not overly expensive at all. Then this particular site that you'll see coming up shortly is one where there are multiple um, classroom examples that give you different ideas of what people are doing. And this isn't related to the classroom cribs. This is another group that are basically sharing some of their uh, different types of uh, spaces. Now, most of them are primary, but there are a couple of secondary spaces there that uh, people are sharing. And what I thought we might do is just um, go out to that at the particular room setups and get some idea of what people are actually doing. So in this space here, you can see the use of colour. Here you can see some use of uh, petitions, which will help to minimise some noise by moving those around. Softer fabric, which means that helps to absorb some of the noise, particularly if you're in an open planned environment. Different layout of desks, uh, things hanging from the ceiling. These are little uh, bird's nests, uh, and they've got this tree that's part of their bulletin board. Uh, different desks use of whiteboards and use of screens. Down here again, lots of dynamics of colour. Uh, so you can see the different types and I'll just go down a little bit here and we'll look at some of the others. Uh, you'll see here that someone has uh, used um, rugs and as you can see it's a kindergarten so great for, for kids getting on the floor during a story time session. Uh, different coloured chairs, different containers on their desks. Uh, we've got different seating. I mean, this is quite unique here. This looks like uh, milk containers and they've just put softer seating on for the students. So be aware that it, it doesn't have to be expensive doing this whole classroom design. You know, you don't need to go out there and, and spend big heaps of money. Uh, you can just do simple things to create different dynamics. And, and as you can see, um, colour displays, uh, different layouts, different spaces areas where, where kids can just lie on the floor or they can move the desks around to suit wherever they're, they're going. So we'll just go down a little bit more on this page so you can see other things that, that people are doing. Uh, here you can see different seating around the reading area. You can see here uh, they've brought in like a, a um, an umbrella. They've got a, a mobile flipboard. Lots of different ideas uh, and you can go in and have a look at this site to, uh, to see the way that you might be able to adopt some of the ideas that are there. So going back to the uh, presentation, uh, I want to go on to an area that's interesting because in the research that uh, I was able to find, they were talking about different learning spaces. And this is a toolkit that has a lot of information that you can use that does a needs assessment. So there's all different guides that you can use to do a needs assessment about what you might want to change for your space, the different space types that you can have available, then looking at specific things about how you would uh, engage integration, how you would provide services and the technology. So this is the, the link here and this is also a gallery of the different photos and pictures uh, similar to, to what we have here. Now this is more of a, a higher uh, education institution, but you can see the different spaces, the, the booths here that separate away from the students, social spaces towards the back, group spaces, technology access, all of this um, is happening. And what I thought I might do is, is take a visit to that because it's worth also um, looking at the different spaces that, that they refer to in their particular documentation. So in this case here, what they have done is they've indicated the different types of spaces that they have and the functions of those spaces. And they have, uh, I think it's about five areas or five or six areas that they refer to. There's areas where they consider that it's necessary for the students to focus. So in this case, they would have uh, this brainstorming areas where students can capture all the things that they want to put down uh, to make sure that they don't lose that information. Uh, so there's also group studies, so they can do it individually or they can do it in a group space. They're using uh, white 
whiteboards and in this case the boards are the whiteboards or here the dividers are, are, are those locations. There's also uh, media sec sections where they can start to capture their initial thoughts and ideas so that they don't lose them. It's like a pre-production phase. They have open work areas where they can uh, be working with the technology, uh, more like a learning commons situation or a research commons. There are all these different spaces that are used so that they can first of all focus on their tasks. Then there's the spaces that they use for collaboration. As an example here, the booth area is a design that is becoming quite common within certain, uh, particularly libraries. We see these where they have the booth situation. Sometimes they have a screen that is a single screen and they link in their devices so that everybody's seeing the same screen. Or in this case, they're bringing their devices and they have access um, to the technology to be able to, to do that. Again, you know, the, the brainstorming group spaces are there. You've also got a presentation spaces where students will be uh, undertaking their preliminary presentation, doing their first draft, getting some feedback from their, their peers and then going away and working on that a little bit more. So there's different points there where we can look at, well, what type of spaces do we have where we can have students collaborating within a classroom? Then you've got the creation space. So as you can see, some of these repeat themselves, like the media production is like a creation space. But then there could well be something like a gaming area in the, now this is quite large, but there could be a, a maker space or a gaming area or an, a, a spot where, where students can develop um, prototypes, like the, you know, the fab labs, tech shops, they can design and fabricate things uh, in those locations. Or if you've got them involved in coding, uh, this is a space, so there's like a technology space where they would do that and, and be involved in that creation. Then the other areas that they have are what they call the sharing spaces. So again, sharing is a, is a presentation space, uh, sharing in various group locations, also to like service points. This would be, particularly if you have a, a school library, there would be staff at, at these service points that students can go to to be able to seek some assistance, share some information, get more guidance on, on various things that they need to be doing. So there's those. And then the next space is more the socialised space where students would be um, able to sit and socialise. The booth is an example of that. But in most of those, it's soft furniture and it's flexible. And really, in some places in schools, there is like a, an area where students can gather to be, to be social. All of this adds to kind of the ambience of what we want to achieve of engaging and motivating students um, through the learning process. I want to actually go and look at a um, school library where we can see a whole mix of these spaces all together. In research that was done by the Victorian Department of Education, they talk specifically about the connection between learning spaces and, and student outcomes. And they make reference to the library as this community space. And the, the comments that they say is, that basically, you know, mobile technologies and wireless connectivity have changed the design of libraries to make them more learner oriented rather than um, just purely a collection of, of resources. In this research, uh, it says that um, libraries have been remodeled to be sensitive to student behavior, independent work and problem solving. The review of the literature argues that the changing nature and use of libraries means that the librarian's work is characterised by teaching information literacy, using shared facilities, telecommunications, multimedia, media, managing digital resources and, and being web managers and creators of content. And so here we see that uh, in this particular design, and this is the presentation that was given by uh, Anne Weaver for her library, the Potter Library. And there's quite dynamic changes that have been made. Here in this section, these are individual chairs that are on coasters, have a, a desk, a little fold desk that comes over. So it means the students can put their laptop on it or whatever they're working on. Underneath, they can store their own personal items. 
and these can be moved around in this space either to allow them to work independently or to work in, in small groups. So that's what that space there is all dealing about. This space here, as you can see, has rectangular tables, but these tables are fold tables, which means they can be folded up and moved away and to open up this space. The stacks within the library where the resources are, these are located, as you can see, by these particular um, designs, and these act as a way of separating the spaces, so to a certain extent can control a little bit of the acoustics in the learning environment. Down the side here they have some booths. In this area here they have tiered, these two areas, they have tiered seating. And so again this becomes a group space but it also becomes a space where kids can get comfortable with whatever piece of furniture they want, um, sitting around using their um, devices in this case uh, to do their work in these um, tiered areas. Now around the edge of these tiered areas um, are again some more bookshelves. In this space here, this is a, like an open natural light coming in. It's a comfortable reading space, fiction collection here, more low level stools. These are rooms that the students can book and they have whiteboard tables in there so they can use those uh, to work on their material as they're getting their ideas together and formulating their thoughts. This space here has a circular tables, so as you can see here are the tables. This roof design is specifically dealing with the acoustics, again, um, in this, and as you can see with carpet, all of that adds to uh, trying to, to minimise any noise that might be happening, but also brings an element of, of special lighting that might be needed in that space. Then here's the what they call the service point. The entrance is the, to the library is there. This is the service point which is here and this is behind here is, is where um, the staff area is where they have the storage for equipment and, and other items that might be used. But here is where students can easily come and, and get some assistance. This section around here is uh, for the senior students and this space over here is one of those presentation spaces. It is similar to the tiered seating that we see here but it's a presentation space so the students are able to come into here, book this spot, come in, do some presentation, get some feedback if they've got other um, students coming in with them and uh, work in this space here. So it's quite a dynamic uh, library and dynamic learning environment that has been developed here for this particular particular school. Now of course you would understand that that has been a fairly expensive exercise for the school uh, so that is an example of where you would go out and do some significant expenditure but if you think about it some of these elements that are here could easily be added into a, uh, a library environment um, without going to, to a major expense. So again I come back to the question about uh, what have you recently changed in your learning space and why? Even just a visit to uh, a paint shop to get some paint, all of that can happen. Uh, even some fabric to put over uh, your uh, display board. If it's, if it's a cork board, you might put some fabric over that just to give it some colour. There's all different ways that you can change the furniture, the layout, the uh, colouring, the acoustics, lighting, all of those sorts of things to um, make your classroom um, a dynamic space. Our Smart Hints and Tips are going to be happening every fourth um, Tuesday at 10.30 and every fourth Wednesday at 8pm. We have a membership component to EduWebinar and the way that that's designed is you pay either monthly or for the year, you take out a subscription and in your subscription all of the webinars that are, that are held as a part of that so you don't pay any more once you've paid your subscription and also too you have access to well over 30 hours of archived professional learning uh, replays with the extra resources that we put in there for our, our folk who um, are subscribers. So thank you for being online and joining me for this particular Smart Hints and Tips where we looked at classroom design and I hope you've picked up some ideas that you can take away that you can use within your classroom space or your learning space or your library or wherever the specialist area is that you are involved in. So thank you and I look forward to seeing you again online soon um, at our next webinar event.